Hi everyone, my name is Carson Lemon Younger, and this is going to be my video presentation for my capstone. As you can see, the title of my research uh, paper is Changing Hearts and Minds, How to Improve Morale and Retention in the United States Military. The purpose behind this research was to bring attention to low morale and retention rates that are currently affecting the United States military, to seek ways to better utilize current leadership styles, and to understand the importance of an all-volunteer volunteer military force. Before we get going, um, we just kind of need to understand the importance of an all-volunteer force and, and who our veterans are of our active duty military and those who have served in the active duty and reserve component of our military. Um, as you can see, at, from 1973, which is the ending of the Vietnam War, the United States has served as an all-volunteer all volunteer military force, meaning that nobody has been conscripted or taken by force into military service. It has all been done by individuals volunteering to join the military. There are currently over 18 million veterans in the United States. And that sounds like a lot, but compared to the over 350 million people that do live in the United States, they actually make up a, about 1% of the population, so they make up a very small percentage. In this presentation, we're going to talk about five styles of leadership, which are the authoritarian, participative, delegative, transactional, and transformational. Let's take a look at the authoritarian and how I think these styles are affecting the United States military in negative ways. So the authoritarian, the leader keeps hold as, of as much power and authority as possible. This is also known as dicta dictor dictatorial leadership, and this is very commonplace throughout the United States military. Um, it's used to retain control and usually requires unquestioning obedience and compliance, and it causes low troop morale. The United States military does have a need for authoritarian uh, leadership, most certainly. You need people that can make decisions and they can just say, hey, you need to go do this or you need to go handle this. However, I do think that there is an over-reliance on this style of leadership and it can lead to extremely low um, troop morale. And I know that it's a big part of why our United States military is having problems keeping their numbers up, keeping their retention high, because people are complaining that there's an abusive in the, uh, or there's kind of like an abusive relationship going on between leaders and followers. The next is the participative style of leadership. Leaders often invite others within the group to take part in the decision-making process, usually used for training young officers, and it does not allow for participation at all levels. This is a good style of leadership. However, as I mentioned here, it's usually used for training the younger officers. A lot of times we have our generals, our admirals, who will come up with the battle plans and they will create the battle maps that we use to go into the big conflict areas, but it's the, uh, the young officers, like the, your first and second lieutenants that are on the ground that actually making um, the plans and, and giving the reconnaissance and intel to these higher ups. And so even though officers are, do a great job and they're outstanding, this is not allowing for participation at all levels, so your lower enlisted, like your lance corporals, your uh, private first classes, your specialists, they're not actually getting um, in on that leadership. They're not actually getting in on the decision making. Um, so that is one reason that I think uh, the United States military is having some retention problems and some morale problems. The delegative, um, also known as the uh, laissez-faire style of leadership. I hope I didn't butcher that too, too bad. Um, this allows leaders to pass off assignments to their subordinates and allow them to make decisions. Um, this is either extremely effective or extremely ineffective, and it poses risk for things to go dangerously wrong. So in combat in the military, um, oftentimes you have very dangerous missions or tasks that need to get completed. Um, something as simple as, hey, I need you to fill out this form so um, you know this Marine or this a uh, soldier can go on leave, that might not be as big as a deal as, okay, hey, we have to navigate a minefield now, and we need you to go figure it out. We need you to figure out how we're gonna navigate it, right? So there's, uh, with this style of leadership, there is room for big error, and oftentimes big error can result in loss of life, serious harm, and so 
Um, it, it's real. This one is really, it's, it's a coin toss. It can be super effective, but it can also not be effective. Sometimes people don't do well when they're delegated positions. And so um, that, is, that is one issue with the delegator style. Next we'll go to transactional. This involves establishing specific goals and then offering a reward for achieving them. Service members also uh, feel as though they are not being rewarded for their hard work. And although the military is a service, soldiers deserve to be recognized for their achievements. This is a big problem that I saw when I was in the military. Oftentimes, um, these men and women are sent away from their families for nine months, a year at a time. And it takes a huge part of you. It takes a big part of that person. And that is a big sacrifice they're making. And, and sometimes when people come home from these nine month, year long deployments, there might be a banner that says, welcome home. And that's just not enough. That's not enough for the people that are coming back. That's not the support they need. And this is not insisting that everybody needs an attaboy or a pat on the shoulder every time they do their job correctly. But there are so many times where, um, oft and, and oftentimes it, it's these younger people in the military that are making these big decisions and big um, leader, taking up these big leadership roles for the first time ever in their life, and they're just not rewarded for it. They they see no reward, they see no recognition, and that can really start to bring down the morale uh, of troops, which which is not what you want. Okay, finally we're gonna hit transformational. This style of leadership allows employees to ha uh, help transform the culture and the organization into something that is innovative and always growing. Um, a lot of times, micromanaging becomes involved with uh, this style of leadership, and also this leads to a lack of trust in basic tasks. One of the biggest things um, affecting the military is micromanagement. For instance, you can have an 18 year old who is responsible for driving and maintaining and shooting his tank, a uh, you know, 40 ton vehicle, but he is not trusted to clean his room. Oftentimes these Marines and soldiers, sailors, airmen, um, they're in charge of millions of dollars worth of equipment and in charge of people's lives, but they are not trusted with the simplest tasks of cleaning uh, their room or uh, showing up somewhere on time and that's where you get micromanagement involved and so it, it starts to kind of play with your head where it's like okay I'm I'm responsible for these you know uh, tanks or these helicopters but I'm not trusted to maintain my room and you next thing you know you have somebody in leadership above you coming over and, and, and making you go through your room and getting an inspector for hours and hours and hours into the night and you're just being constantly micromanaged. It's, it's just not a good situation. And that comes to, like I said, a lack of trust in basic tasks. So if, if you can't, um, if you, it, they feel as though if they can't trust me to clean my room, how can they trust me to fly this helicopter or, or, or drive this tank? And it, it, it just, it starts to play mind games with uh, our soldiers and it's just, it's not a good avenue. It very much hurts our uh, military retention. So what is the answer? How do we fix military retention and uh, improve morale so that we can maintain an all-volunteer force, right? Because that's the whole goal here, is we want to maintain and keep that all-volunteer force as much as possible. We do not want to force uh, members of our society into the military if they do not desire to be there. We saw that happen in the Vietnam War, where at one point over 50% of the people that were in Vietnam were there, um, not they, they were not volunteer. They were there and they had no motivation to fight. So all of these leadership styles have advantages and disadvantages, right? And there's a quote from Sergeant Major of the Army, Richard A. Kidd, which says, soldiers learn to be uh, good leaders from good leaders. And I love that quote so much because oftentimes the simplest answer is the correct answer. And I, I do think that is the answer. You, we need good leaders so that we can continue to get good leaders. And by having good leaders, we're gonna to continue to keep people in our military readiness force so that we won't have to have a draft or have a uh, um, forced indoctrination. So um, we're gonna talk about how to know and use these five styles more effectively. So we've talked about some of the problems. Let's go over some of the solutions we can use in these leadership styles. For authoritarian, you can rely less on authority to make others do something and provide purpose to the mission at hand. A lot of times, people that have rank in the military, if you outrank somebody, you have the ability to say, hey, go do this, 
Don't ask why, just go do it. Do it because I said. That can start to hurt morale. What you want to do is provide them a purpose. Say, hey, your mission is this, and you're going to do it because X or Y or Z. You, they need to know that what they're doing is having an impact, making a difference. Particip participative. This allows others to provide input to the decision-making process and allow subordinates to provide their input. This is so important. I know we talked about the officers in this category, but what is so important is getting your, your lower enlisted guys, like your privates, your private first class, your lance corporals, specialists, corporals, get them involved. Let, let them speak their mind. Let them tell you what they see from their perspective. And, and I believe that can just provide so much better intelligence and so much better morale for troops, knowing that their voices are heard and that their input is at least being considered. They may not take that advice, but at least it's being considered and it's allowed to be brought to the table. Delegative. Observe performance and make adjustments. Allow subordinates to think critically and plan. This is pretty self-explanatory. Allow people to think critically and, and plan for themselves. You may delegate somebody to a task and they may fail at it, but make, observe it, make corrections, and you know, allow that person to receive feedback, but allow them to get the gears going. Allow them to start thinking. Transactional. Ensure troops are being rewarded and recognized for their outstanding performances. Uh, try to acknowledge an eff uh, the effort and attention to detail. Like we said, you don't always need a pat on the back or an attaboy for doing your job. You don't, but sometimes for big things, um, you need serve to be recognized and you deserve to be rewarded. We're, so we need to work on rewarding our service member and letting them know that their sacrifices and their efforts are being noticed. Transformational. Avoid micromanaging and trust our soldiers to perform duties without supervision. Now, when I say without supervision, obviously there needs to be training. You can't just be um, given a helmet and a pair of boots and expect to fly a helicopter. No, it takes training and it takes time and it takes mentorship and coaching. But what this is, what I'm trying to say here is that we need to work them up to a level, and, and there are going to be mistakes involved. With that, but making mistakes is a good thing because mistakes are how we learn. So allowing them to make those mistakes without somebody looking over their shoulder is a good way of um, ensuring that they're, they're getting that transformational leadership and they're not being micromanaged. Of course, they need regular supervision, they need regular coaching and teaching on how to do these things, but they need to be allowed to do these things on their own so they can get the uh, confidence and um, encourage to do their job. All right, in conclusion, um, a loss of good core leaders is due to the overwhelming amount of mismanagement and poor leadership in the military. And what I mean by that is people getting to a certain rank and abusing it, like the authoritarian style is huge. I, I cannot stress that enough. That is a huge reason uh, style of leadership that pushes people from the military because that style of leadership is just so abused and overused. Um, the military will fill its ranks if its uh, retention slash enlistments are not met. And this is a fact. If there are not enough people re-enlisting because they are not having a good time, not having um, an experience that they think is worth signing up for another enlistment for, they will not join. But the military has to exist. We have to have an army and a navy and an air force and a marine corps and a coast guard, a space force now. All of these things have jobs that need to be met and the government will fill them. Luckily, we live in a time where there is a volunteer force that fills them. But if, if we continue on this path of making troops miserable and, and making them not want to stay stick around, we could possibly see a draft or we could see forced inscription into the military. Um, ensuring that quality leadership is applied to our service members will in turn keep more people in the military, thus eliminating any threat of draft or forced indoctrination. I already hit that one on the head. Guys, this has been my presentation. Please feel free to leave me questions or comments about what you thought, things that could be improved. Thank you so much.